was the left hand side. The right hand side, we know that um, 2 thirds EK squiggly is proportional to temperature. That side is also proportional to temperature. If I move this around, EK is proportional to 3 halves T. That's my derivation by experiment. EK squiggly is actually 3 halves, and it's the same constant that goes in there. So now I have a second formula for kinetic energy. This one you need to be able to use mathematically. And of course, the ideal gas law you have to be able to use mathematically. Uh, particular concept here, if you're at absolute zero, that means what's happening to your molecule? Yeah, they're not moving anymore. Temperature is zero, there's no kinetic energy, that means there's no velocity, and, and they essentially stop moving. Okay? All right, let's continue. Okay, we are going to return to an earlier time now. Uh, P. equals one-third, so this is the old formula, n over v, remember this, mu bar squared. So we had that a while ago. I'm going to move things around a little bit, do a couple of substitutions. pv equals one-third n m u bar squared. And then uh, equals one-third n, remember that's Na times, well Avogadro's number times the number of moles, times m times u bar squared. Now I'm going to make another like magical thing happen. I'm going to say we're doing this for n equals one mole. So we're doing this for one mole of substance essentially. That's going to cause uh, a couple of nice things to happen. One is this n is going to turn into the number one. So that's going to be gone. So PV equals one third n a m u bar squared. What is n a times m? Avogadro's number times mass is? It's a molar mass, yeah. So this is capital M molar mass. So uh, let's see where we are. P V equals one third um, M U bar squared. Okay, now we'll come back up to the right hand side. P V, what's P V equal to? We have already derived it. PV equals nRT from the ideal gas law equals one third m u bar <coughs> squared. Fantastic! So excited, <laughs> busting my chalk off. Okay, what I'm gonna do is solve. Oh, what happens to this n by the way? It goes to one because we're assuming one mole. So that disappears. Let's solve for u squared. U, square, u bar squared. That's going to be 3 times R times T divided by capital M. Where the N went to 1. Well, let's take a square root. 3 R T over M is U bar squared. Square root. Well, U bar squared square root, we call that root mean square velocity. U R M S, just by definition. So, this formula right here, you also need to know how to use mathematically. It comes from the same kind of calculation that we were doing before. Root mean square velocity, you want to know what that is conceptually, too. If you have, like, a, here's the fraction of molecules here, and say you're plotting velocity here. Your average curve, and you should be able to draw, draw this, looks like this. It's a little fatter on the right-hand side than the left. 
Okay, so the right hand side should look a little more fat. Here, let me make it look really fat. Okay? And then, is this the root mean square velocity? It's not, it's just the top of the curve. Okay? The root mean square velocity would probably be somewhere here. It, it, is that equal to the average mean velocity? Not necessarily. That would probably be right here. U mean. They're not necessarily equal except by pure chance. So U mean, that's just U bar. Those things are not equal. But essentially, if you find the root mean square velocity, you've essentially found the average. Okay? And it's essentially the top of the curve, though not exactly. To the right a little bit. The nice thing about this formula, notice you don't need to know anything about the molecule chemically. You only need to know its molar mass to find its root mean square velocity. That's the only factor. Yeah. So it's the same, but it's not the same, the bar and the root mean square? Yeah, they're not equal, but they're similar in value. So essentially, if you found one, you, f you know that the average velocity is a similar value. So. And it just mathematically, it's easier to derive that one. That's why we use it so often. Okay. And then uh, two more things. If I increase the temperature, okay, what's going to happen? If I increase the temperature on this thing, the curve is going to flatten out and move to the right with an increase in temperature. And that's something you should know. It moves to the right because as temperature increases, so will the kinetic energy, and so will the velocity. Okay? When is velocity? When is it inversely proportional? When does velocity go down? Velocity will go down if the temperature goes down. Yeah. It goes up. So it's directly proportional to temperature and kinetic energy. Okay? It flattens out because as you have something going faster, there's more possible speeds that it could have and a higher distribution. So it'll always widen out as it goes to the right. And it'll always shrink up as it goes to the left. Sorry, what was on the dependent axis? Is this here? Yeah. Oh, this said, uh, the y-axis is fraction of molecules found at that particular velocity. So let's say 20% are here, this is 10% are here, that kind of stuff. Okay, um, and then one last thing. If I take the root mean square velocity, say of molecule A, and take the root mean square velocity, divide molecule B, so put that in the denominator, let's fill in this equation, see what happens. 3RT over M, and 3R T over M, bottom one's for B, the top one's for A. Well, you're going to notice 3 is a constant, it'll cancel. R is a constant, it'll cancel. And this is going to be these two saying they're in the same container or same system. So temperature will cancel. All that's left is the molar mass, which should be different between two different molecules. So this will cause MB over MA, and this is called Graham's Law. You should know how to use this. You should know what possible properties besides rate can go in here. So besides the ratio of rates, this also works for amounts, like a mass or something like that. Uh, it'll work for a distance, how far something travels. Uh, let's see, what else? It'll also work for time. So. Um, but if you use time here, you have to remember these two will inverse. So the MA will actually be on top.